Uh, more now on the man who sparked all this. Our Randy Kay went to Matt Gates's congressional district to see what his constituents think of it all. What do you think about uh, Matt Gates leading that uh, move to oust Speaker Kevin McCarthy? I think it's a great move on his part. He's a hero to me. A hero is how Republican voter Billy Mitchell sees Matt Gates. Here on the northwestern edge of Florida's panhandle in Gates's congressional district, voters like Mitchell are in good company. Matt Gates believes that he did what his constituents wanted him to do. Do you support that? Is that oh, what yes. you wanted? Yes, absolutely. It's in I'd like business. To see the government shut down entirely for a while. Maybe the money won't be. Maybe our money won't be going to Ukraine. Not every Republican we met backs Gates's decision to oust McCarthy. We didn't think that was a good idea. Gates has been a great congressman here, strong conservative. We thought this was a mistake. John Roberts is chairman of the Escambia County Republican Party. I don't think the majority of the constituents really wanted that. It would have been better if we just simply supported him, worked together, and gotten the job done without all this uh, waste of time. Republican Buddy Cummings had nothing good to say about the Gates-led rebellion in the House. Now we don't have a... a leader and so I think it just creates so much more chaos. Gates would disagree. I don't think voting against Kevin McCarthy is chaos. I think 33 trillion in debt is chaos. I don't know if he's about trying to create a circus or that he's trying to be the ringleader of it, but I think it's uh, very dangerous. And this independent voter, he's no fan of Gates either. Matt Gates is a bully. I'm one of his constituents and I disagree, so he won't be getting my vote. This woman, a Democrat, believes Gates's push to remove McCarthy was personal, related to the House Ethics Committee investigation of Gates. I think uh, it was absolutely personal. It kind of comes across like just attention seeking. Um, I don't think that anything he does is really for the good of the constituents. I think it's what's good for him. Gates, now 41, was born in Hollywood, Florida, but grew up in the panhandle. He earned a bachelor's degree from Florida State University and later graduated William and Mary Law School. Gates worked as an attorney before becoming a Florida State Senator in 2010 alongside his wealthy father. Don Gates was a state senator from 2006 to 2016. Now 75, he's announced plans to run again. In 2016, Matt Gates was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives. Now, with some Republicans calling for Gates to be expelled from the House GOP conference, his own political future may be in jeopardy. Do you think he should remain in Congress? I, if, if, I, if it was up to me, absolutely not. I think we all need to calm down, get along, work together. We can work with Matt Gates. Randy Kay joins us now. So given the electoral makeup of that part of Florida, is support for Gates surprising? It's not really surprising, Anderson. No, this is a very red part of the state, the first congressional district here in the panhandle. In fact, back in 2020, Donald Trump won this district uh, by a very wide margin. He got more than 65 percent of the vote compared to Joe Biden, who got about 33 percent of the vote. And then just last year here, uh, Matt Gates won re-election in this district uh, by nearly 36 percentage points. So this is very friendly Republican territory. And I spoke with a lot of people today on both sides of the aisle, Anderson, who do expect that Matt Matt Gates will win re-election again yeah. next year. Randy Kay, thanks very much. Perspective now from CNN political commentator Alyssa Farr Griffin, who once worked for Congressman Jordan when he was chaired the House Freedom Caucus. So Jordan is trying to lock down support of moderates. Former president says, you know, put me in, coach. Uh, what do you make of this? Situation. So listen, uh, both Steve Scalise and Jim Jordan, the two declared and likely candidates, um, kind of take votes from each other. So Steve Scalise has the moderates in his corner. I would suspect Jim Jordan's meeting with the House Freedom Caucus, which he was a founding member and chairman of tomorrow, I would guess that they as a group would endorse him um, as a block. I also, Matt Gates has suggested he would lower his requirements for the motion to vacate for a Jim Jordan speaker. That's a big selling point within the conference because this notion of the motion to vacate hanging over everyone's head and speakers only lasting a few months months is a problem. But they neither of these candidates have 218 votes, not even close to it. So what I'd expect is next week you're going to see a private conference ballot. Um, it's, you know, they do not make their votes public. And they're going to realize that nobody has a majority of votes. 
Now, the Donald Trump idea and all this, I'm considering it political fan fiction at this point. Um, <laughs> he doesn't know how to do the job. It's a, high, it's, a, it's a functional role, for one thing. He also wouldn't have the votes. Even the most diehard House Republicans, I think, would admit that he would be a further agent of chaos. He's not somebody who could fund the government. And I think he'd probably get under 150 votes on a private ballot in Congress. Can Jim Jordan win over moderates? It's a very tough sell. Um, anyone who's uh, been part of the House Republican Conference since, you know, the early days of the Freedom Caucus, I think, would say that Jim Jordan is not someone you could expect to pass a government funding bill and divided government. You know, that's 43 days ahead. That's going to be his biggest hurdle. He is a good messenger. He's a good face for the party in an era when they want to go after Joe Biden and talk about the impeachment inquiry. A scenario that I could see happening, though I've not heard many rumblings of this, is ultimately a deal being cut between Scalise and Jim Jordan. One is speaker, one is leader, where they kind of burden share mm -hmm. and trying to bring everyone into the fold. Because right now, the votes do not exist for any one individual. I mean, if, if there is a battle going on for the soul of, of the Republican Party, I'm not sure if it is going on or if it's already been won by the, the, the Trump wing, um, what would a Jim Jordan speakership say about the future of the Republican Party? I mean, that would be the logical, almost, conclusion of the Trump era, would be somebody who was instrumental in, you know, going after John Boehner, him leading, somebody who started the Freedom Caucus, who became the biggest defender of Trump. He received a Presidential Medal of Freedom from Donald Trump for his efforts and things related to Crossfire Hurricane and investigating Hillary Clinton. Him becoming Speaker would basically be the icing on the cake of, this is Donald Trump's party. It is not the party of Paul Ryan, the Reagan Republican Party, anymore. Yeah, Far Griffin, thanks so much.